In a previous episode, I talked about the hot seat, an accessory for the NES that controlled games by moving around in a seat. The seat also had an attached joystick for the buttons. It was released in 1990 at a suggested retail price of $99, although it was quickly discounted. The hot seat was made by a company based out of Wichita, Kansas called Power to the 10th Incorporated. The device won the Is This Peripheral Really Necessary Award from the Chicago Tribune's coverage of the 1991 Consumer Electronics Show, and it quickly faded into obscurity. As far as I knew, the hot seat was the only device Power to the 10th Incorporated ever released. Well, I was wrong, because they also released this, the hot stick, a motion-controlled joystick. The hot stick is basically the hot seat without the seat. If you recall, all of the hot seat's technology is contained within the joystick on the armrest. Technically, you can detach the joystick and everything will work just fine. Well, Power to the 10th Incorporated decided that maybe that's all people really needed, and that's where the hot stick comes in. Taking a look at the box, the hot stick promises more action, thrills, freedom, and excitement. Power to the 10th Incorporated made the hot stick for both the Genesis and the Nintendo Entertainment System. The joystick itself is pretty light. The trigger is the A button. The B button rests on top between the select and the run button, also known as the start button. It also has a turbo switch below. With the hot seat, you can't actually open the joystick up to see how everything works, so I assume it uses tilt switches. However, the hot stick uses Phillips screws. Normally, I would open this up to show you how it works, but when you shake the device, it sounds like liquid. That's enough for me to know that this thing definitely uses tilt switches filled with liquid mercury. Mercury is a metal that is a liquid at room temperature. It's used in a variety of consumer products, including thermometers, light bulbs, and televisions. You can even find mercury in canned tuna fish. Exposure to too much mercury can potentially poison you and is especially harmful to children. The hot stick uses liquid mercury in tilt switches, which works the motion controls. If you want to use the joystick, make sure it's not leaking. To prevent coming into contact with mercury, I would not open the joystick up. So now for the ultimate question, does it work? Let's test out the hot stick with a few games. With the hot seat, I tested out Super Mario Bros., Mega Man 3, Top Gun, and Rad Racer. With the hot stick, I had Patreon supporters submit game suggestions to try out. So let's get started with a platformer, Kirby's Adventure. When I tested the hot seat with Super Mario Bros., I was pleasantly surprised by how well it worked. I feel similarly with Kirby's Adventure on the hot stick. The game is very forgiving to new players, so using the hot stick isn't a huge handicap. One problem, though, is that the hot stick is a very light device. The slightest movement will change your direction. I think it could work better with a little weight added to it. That's one advantage the hot seat has over this. Kirby's Adventure was tough, but playable. How does the hot stick work with a shoot 'em up like Gradius? Well, precise movement is required, so it doesn't do great. You never feel like you have full control of your ship. Dodging projectiles and enemies is just too difficult. I couldn't even manage to put in the Konami code. Playing Punch-Out with the hot stick was an absolute disaster. For whatever reason, dodging left or right is impossible. It seems to happen at random. I had no issues with punching, though. I was able to take down Glass Joe thanks to the one-hit KO when he charges at you. Punch-Out is hard enough with a regular controller. Using the hot stick makes it unplayable. Let's try a puzzle game, and why not the most popular puzzle game of all time? Tetris! Well, it works, but it's very slow-paced. Moving left or right wasn't that much of an issue, but moving down was. So you just have to wait for the piece to fall. Not a great game with the hot stick. How about we end on a high note? Let's pop in Rad Racer and see how it does. Well, yeah, the hot stick works great with it. And that is the hot stick. Overall, it's very inconsistent, just like the hot seat. But again, tilt switch motion controls just don't work all that well. Considering the steep price tag and novelty of the hot seat, it wasn't a bad idea for Power to the 10th Incorporated to come out with the hot stick. 
But still, I wouldn't recommend actually using this as a controller. Normally, I wouldn't even make a video about just a joystick, but given the mystery around these products, I figured it was worth showing off. Will we find even more Power to the 10th products? Who knows? But that's the wonderful thing about history. New discoveries are being made every day. That's all for this episode of The Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching. Funding for Gaming Historian is provided in part by supporters on Patreon. Thank you.